They say good things come in small packages. Well, let's take a detailed walkthrough and performance review of the 175 Bowrider by Bayliner and see if that's true. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. Now, the 175 is Bayliner's most popular boat ever, and there's a good reason for that. Let's look at some of these features. The optional extended platform will add 23 inches to the length overall of the 175's molded platform. And notice the three-step reboarding ladder over on the starboard side, right in line with the helm. Additionally, there's a small cutaway port here that allows you to clearly see the outdrive underneath. I like the stainless steel engine vents, and there's a non-skid cap rail going all the way around the cockpit. And look at this engine box. Baylander's added some utility to it this year. There's a non-skid surface on top, a small recessed utility area below just for putting stuff, two drink holders on either side, and look at the tie downs. You can bungee cord a tube or whatever you'd like on top of the engine box. And I'm happy to see a fire extinguisher discharge port on the side. I like that there's a latch holding the engine box closed. There are gas assist struts to hold it in the open position. And notice how the engine box is cut down so nice and low. That allows you easy access for maintenance. Here we have a Merc Cruiser 3.0 TKS 135 horsepower engine. Bayliner is very big on having the open bulwarks on the side, which add a little bit to the storage and utility of the cockpit. Here they've got bungee cords, which would probably make a nice place for putting life jackets, but I'd like to see a combing piece right here just to add to the utility of this storage area. If you go for the Flight Series option, not only do you get the extended swim platform, but you also get the wakeboard tower and the very cool hull side graphics. The captain gets a bucket seat that swivels and slides, and notice that it's not wrap around, so you can just swivel yourself out without having to turn the seat. Over to the port side, back-to-back -back seating that also lays flat. Passenger gets a stereo, MP3 port, 12-volt supply, storage compartment, and a drink holder. The helm seat is very low, almost uncomfortably low, which makes the engine controls very high. An advantage to the seat being so low is that I'm looking right through the windshield and not at a windshield frame. Basic layout, but functional on the gauges. Speedometer, tachometer, two gauges embedded into the speedometer. There are two drink holders, which I like to see because one always is used for holding stuff. Down below, lighted toggle switches, tilt steering. One thing I'd also like to see, bring a sunshade out a little bit over the free gauges. The walkthrough windshield, padded here and here, so when it's in the closed position, there's no vibrating. When it's in the open position, a rubber stopper will keep it from slamming, and I'd like to see a strap and snap hold it in the open position. Nice, beefy windshield supports that easily hold my weight. Coming up to the bow, we've got the usual storage under both seats. The distance between the seat cushions, 15 inches, so quite clearly, if you plan on facing each other, you're going to be knocking knees together. But that's not how you sit in this bout. Okay, so let's get underway and take a look at the performance. Our Bayliner 175 bow rider had an empty weight of 1,923 pounds. With half fuel, two people on board, and test gear, we had a test weight of 2,358 pounds. I measured a top speed of 41.4 miles per hour, reached at 4,500 RPM. At that speed, we were burning 10.7 gallons per hour, while getting roughly 3.9 gallons per hour for a range of 73 miles. I haven't had time to crunch the numbers yet and determine what the best cruise performance will be, but I find that about 3,000 RPM, 26 miles an hour, that's where the boat feels best to me. As it turned out, that feeling coincides with the measured best cruise of 26.5 miles per hour. Now we were burning 4.7 gallons per hour while getting 5.7 miles per gallon for a range of 108 miles with a 10% reserve. We had a respectable time to plane of 3.7 seconds, reached 20 miles per hour in 6.2 seconds, and accelerated through 30 miles per hour in 9.2 seconds. When you hit the throttle, the bow will come up roughly 17 degrees, but since it's a small boat and the bow is so close, I never lost sight of the horizon. When you get up on plane and start bringing the trim up, you're going to see the spray from the helm start to disappear and move back towards the rear of the boat. Watch. The Bayliner 175 is so popular, probably because it's such a safe boat. It turns so gently, it bleeds off so much speed, so that if you don't slow the boat down, it'll slow down for you. That makes it a great, safe boat to let the kids tool around in. When slowing, the 175 will settle from the stern first, and when the speed bleeds off, then the bow settles in. I also found that she maintains heading as she slows. I've seen others that wander. So I look at a boat this size with a wakeboard tower and 135 horsepower engine. I ask myself, really? Is this going to be able to pull a wakeboarder out of the water? Only way to find out is to go get a wakeboarder and let's start towing him.
If I didn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. But not only was I able to get this 200-pound wakeboarder on top of the water, but while he's tracking back and forth, I'm able to maintain a nice straight heading, and we seem to be putting out enough of a wake for him to get some good air underneath the board. As it turns out, the 175 bow rider is a decent boat to go wakeboarding on. Hey, good things do come in small packages. That's our detailed walkthrough and performance review of the 175 Bow Rider by Bayliner. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. See you on the water.